So, it's 2024, which means it's time to learn a bit of new tech. So, I've created a simple list of things which I want to learn in 2024, and that's what I will share with you today. So, let's head over to my screen and see what I want to learn. So, the first thing I want to learn in 2024 is AWS. And now, you'll probably ask me, why the hell do you need AWS. You have Vercel, Fly.io, I don't know, hosting or whatever you have for hosting. Why would you even look or even bother touching AWS? And well, the first thing is AWS is the cloud of the enterprise. If you look at, for example, Vercel, at the end of the day, they are just a wrapper on AWS. They resell you AWS infrastructure for a higher markup. Of course, you get benefits, UI, UX, it's very easy to deploy, but at the end of the day, everything is built on AWS. Also, for example, Superbase is also hosted on the AWS. So it shows you a lot of big players or enterprises are hosted on AWS. And I think it would be quite beneficial actually to learn at least the basics of AWS. The second thing is AWS is quite affordable. Now, is it cheap? No, it isn't. But at the end of the day, it's really much cheaper than, for example, Vercel. And now the third thing why I want to learn AWS is because AWS is actually very in demand. If you track the job market, even though it's not interesting for me, but still, if you check it, you will see that AWS and also the certifications of AWS are quite in demand and actually they also pay quite good. And maybe for me, this isn't again very interesting, I don't need it, but for you guys, it could be actually quite beneficial to learn AWS to get better job perspectives. So that's why I will learn AWS and maybe why you should also learn AWS in this year. Now, the second thing I want to learn in this year is React Native. Now, first of all, what is React Native? Well, React Native is actually a framework with which you can build um, native applications. So iOS, Android, I don't know what there's, uh, Mac OS, and many more things. So in general, just native applications. And of course, there are also other alternatives like Swift or Kotlin, uh, whatever you need for your native application. But the nice thing with React Native is, since I'm a React, uh, React developer, I only need to know one thing, and that's React. And with this one, I guess, framework, I can build for multiple devices and multiple actual uh, operating systems. So with React Native, I can build for iOS, I can build for Android, and I don't have to learn Kotlin, Swift, I don't have to touch Xcode or whatever there is, and it's quite nice. The second thing is why I need to learn or why I want to learn React Native in 2024 is actually that I need it for my business. So some of you probably know that I am not a YouTuber in that sense. I have an actual business that I run. And for 2024, I will actually have to build an app for my business. And I have thought about the use case or actually how I would do it. There are two ways, of course. A, I built with native technology, Swift and Kotlin, which would be probably a nicer feel on native, but it would take much longer because A, I don't know Swift, I don't know Kotlin. I don't want to touch uh, Xcode. I, I, I have done that once. It was quite an annoying thing, but hey, it's still there. And actually, I know already React. So for me personally, React Native is the perfect choice. And yes, there's Flutter. I have touched Flutter. I don't like it. So that's why I will actually try to learn React Native. Now, the first thing I want to learn in 2024 is AI. Now, you know, 2023 was quite an uprise in AI. You saw left and right where just ChatGPT rappers would come up. People would make dollar and dollar and dollar and everyone just was reselling GPT-3 or 3.5 or 4, whatever they did. Um, I don't want to do that. I don't want to just create a new application that just wraps um, GPT-4 and AI and API in that case. What I want to do this year is actually learn LLMs, or in that case, I want to deep dive into LLMs. And first of all, what are even LLMs? Well, LLMs are large language models. And what is a language model, for example, or a large language model? Well, that's GPT-4, GPT-3.5, GPT-3. These are language models. And that's exactly what I want to do. And of course, it won't be the scale of GPT-4, Not it won't even uh, scratch the surface. But I still think it's quite uh, beneficial to learn how these actually work under the hood. Because most people just learn, hey, how do I connect to my API and how do I do that and how do I uh, create a wrapper? 
But I don't find, uh, think that's interesting, actually. I want to actually learn how they work underneath it, how they create the LLMs and how it works. And that's why I want to actually learn AI and uh, dive even further than most people do. Now, the fourth thing I want to learn in 2024 is Docker. So why do I want to learn Docker in 2024? Well, it's actually quite simple. And my business is built on Fly.io and Remix. And if you didn't know, to deploy a Remix application to Fly.io, you have to create a Docker file. And in the past, I've just uh, gone to the Remix GitHub, copy and paste it, and just hope that everything works. Now, the thing is, I didn't really understand what I did. I just know, I just wrote something, checked some boxes, and hoped that it would work. And it did in most cases, but again, I didn't know what I did. And in this year, I want to change it. I want to actually understand what happens when I do certain things in the Docker file and how to fix certain bugs. Because, for example, I uh, had some problems uh, one time with fly.io and my Docker file. And that's because I just uh, misspelled some few things and wrote some things not correct. And I didn't really understand why it was wrong because at the end of the day, I again did not understand Docker. And that's why I want to change it this year. I want to fully learn Docker and how to fully fix things. Now, the next thing could be maybe interesting and that's that I want to learn SQL. Now, in most videos and also in my personal applications, I always use Prisma. And now in simple applications, you don't really notice the bottleneck which uh, Prisma creates. And if you didn't know, first of all, what Prisma is, Prisma is an ORM. So I don't have to write raw SQL, but I can just write the pre, uh, Prisma query syntax and I get type safe results, which is nice. Now, the problem with that is that um, Prisma is built on a lot of stuff and you have this whole, um, I guess, um, a rust layer and everything like that. And the problem with that is that Prisma gets quite slow. And also in certain, um, I guess, cases, Prisma does not send one um, SQL query, but it sends multiple SQL queries. I don't want that. It takes way too much time. And also, of course, my bandwidth, my database, everything costs money. So that's why I want to learn actually SQL. It's faster. It runs on the edge. One problem with Prisma is, Prisma can't run on the edge. And if you want to run it on the edge, you have to pay for Prisma Accelerate, which is again an extra service provided by Prisma. I don't want to do that. I just want to write my SQL, run it wherever I want, and I want it to be type safe. And that's why I want to learn in 2024 SQL, uh, maybe also use a package to make a type safe. For example, there's PG typed, and also a few other types, or uh, you could also use Knex or however you spell it or call it, I don't even know. Um, I could learn that. And I think with that, actually, first of all, my application would get faster. I wouldn't have a headache to think about, hey, this does not run on the edge uh, runtime and this runs and this and that and la la la. And also, I also know what exactly runs. So again, with Prisma, I don't really know what request it does, what query request it does. And if I write my own SQL query, I would 100% know, hey, this works and this is how long it takes and everything like that. So that's why I want to run, uh, learn SQL instead of Prisma or I want to migrate off Prisma to SQL. And now there's, of course, also Drizzle ORM, which is a new uh, ORM. And it's also quite nice, actually, because you have uh, quite a connection to SQL because instead of creating a new uh, syntax like Prisma has done, or, um, Drizzle has actually taken the SQL syntax, changed it a bit, not really changed, but made, um, made it a bit type safe. And it's actually also quite nice. So I will think about maybe I will uh, ditch completely Prisma, just go completely bare bones SQL, or I will try out Drizzle ORM because I haven't done that um, before. So yeah, that's what I want to learn in 2024 in total five things. And we'll see what will happen. Maybe I will learn a few things, maybe not. But what I will certainly do is update you at the end of the year and tell you what I've learned and what I did not learn. So with that out of the way, I hope you enjoyed this video. And now the next video which will come will be a nice tutorial. And then I hope I will see you in the next video. So now, bye.